Well, hello and welcome to the DHL Clubhouse here. We're digging into the vault to look at some of the old Rugby Canada highlights from, from previous years. My name is Gareth Rees. I'm delighted to be here and we're really happy that Velocity Trade have sponsored this segment. They stick by our Sevens athletes and, and our supporters of our, our athletes throughout the year. So thanks very much to Velocity Trade. But here in the DHL Clubhouse, we're going to go back to 2017, uh, month of February, and we're going to go down to Australia, down under to Sydney. And it was the 2017 Women's Final, Canada versus USA. A great day for Canadian rugby. And I have two of the uh, stars of that day joining me. Really happy to have all the way from Williams Lake via Langford, Kayla Maleshi, and from Montreal, Bianca Ferrella. Welcome, ladies. Welcome to The Vault here in the clubhouse. Hey, guys. Thanks for having us. Just before we get going on the 2017 game, you're there in sunny Langford. Just give us an idea of what the last few months have been like. We've all been affected by COVID. Bianca, I know you guys were very well prepared for the Olympics, ready to go. That postponement, what has that been like for you and the team to prepare? Absolutely, Gareth, you said it. Like we were, we're pretty much in fine tuning, the fine tuning months ahead of the Olympic Games. So for the, the pandemic to hit us just four months before was honestly a heartbreaking was heartbreaking news for all of us. Um, I think most of us are still dealing with it, but um, I mean, like anything else, you kind of take the time to adapt to the certain times, to these uncertain times like everyone else has. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Kayla, tell us, it is uncertain. You give us a little bit of insight of what your day looks like, how you're preparing uh, for rugby, but also taking all the necessary precautions as per the BC health guidelines. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we had four months there where we were training on our own and we rented equipment from where we could. Obviously that was looking like a garage for most people <laughs> and kind of dumbbells, whatever weight we could get our hands on. And then obviously running conditioning and speed and whatever kind of skills you could do on your own or with a partner that you quarantined with. But for the flip side of it, we've kind of just started getting back into our daily training environment and it's been good. There's been challenges, obviously, a lot of different protocols in place and measures to stay on top of hygiene and social distancing, but all the while still trying to be able to train for an Olympics. And that's, you know, like that shows dedication and determination and the passion that we all have for this sport. And although, you know, the unprecedented times of COVID has hit us, we are still on that track to success at the Olympics and seeing a podium finish for our team so we look forward to taking away at the days and obviously taking it day by day but um yeah we're looking forward to the new year and what it has to bring for us great stuff well we're all looking forward to getting back on the field elite athletes and our grassroots so we're starting to see some movement so that'll be good to see but let's take you back to february 2017 uh, we're going to look at the final of that tournament but before that, this was the second tournament of the year. You guys have been down to Dubai, and Bianca, not necessarily your best performance, six in that one for, for the girls. So how was it that you were trying to, uh, I guess, fix that once you arrived in Sydney? Absolutely. Um, yeah, after after the Olympics, I guess we didn't have the, a very good start for our 2016-2017 season. Um, and honestly, that's okay. Like, we have a decently long season, so um, we're always looking to do better and and – you know, we were fresh off well, of a bronze medal finish and, you know, we really want to get gold next summer. So you always have to look ahead and, um, and really like what we did was a lot of game analysis and, um, and we focused a lot on our research so that we can retain possession. And that's exactly what well, we did in Sydney. Well, talk me through that. Cause you had a mixed team, a few younger players and a few players named their end. Jen Kish was back from injury. Um, Kayla, you know, you guys lost your last game on day one against New Zealand, a tough result, but what a rebound. Day two was fantastic. You beat the Russians in the quarterfinal and the Aussies on their home patch in the semifinal. And what Coach John Tate says was probably the moment of the tournament, despite you did actually win the final. But uh, how important was that day two performance? Oh, so important. I mean, you talk about being able to put the past behind you and look forward to, you know, the opportunities that we still have out on the pitch. And Games against New Zealand are always tough, and it's not necessarily because they take our opportunities away from us. It's just because we don't successfully execute them, and that's just it, and that's how it's been in the past. And I think moving into day two on in that tournament, we proved that we were the better team all around, coming out beating up Russia, then Australia on home turf, which is always such <laughs> a fun thing to do. 
Um, and you had great crowds down there. This was a really good turnout. This yeah. was the start of the real next level of interest in the Women's Absolutely. Seven Series. And it's, yeah, it's always so much fun to be in that electricity of an environment and to feel it. And I think we really did. And um, yeah, leading ourselves into that final, it was, it was evident that we were going to come out on top just how the team was firing and how everyone was feeding off each other. And, and I think that was like a big part of it. Well, you mentioned team and let me go through your teammates that day. Uh, ben, Williams, Kish, Landry, Darling, Stacy, Maleshi, Watcham Roy, Farella, Lucan, Nicholas and Greenshields. And uh, just a good group. You guys were really well organized. Your patterns were really strong. You mentioned kickoffs earlier, Bianca, and Hannah Darling really was amazing in this tournament on that front, winning possession for you and think, in the opening play of this final, I think Liv Kelter takes a shot to the head and is actually out of the game for the first half. Hannah beats her in the air. So nice to see her emerging as a young player. Absolutely. Yeah, with you naming the roster, it really brings us back. It, it was kind of like a restart of the new quad. And it was so awesome for us to see the new talent that we had and, and really for them to showcase everything that they worked for in a final right off the bat, right at the beginning of a first quad. Um, yeah. yeah. With, you know, Green Shields, with Nicholas, with... Lucan with Darling, uh, unreal players who have tr achieved tremendous success and we're so happy that we've been able to share the field with them. There was a little bit of talent on the other side in the red, white and blue as well. Uh, they did an amazing job. They beat New Zealand in their semifinal. That's the USA women's team. Uh, Naya Tapa got a few passes, three in the final. She was immense on attack, although it must be say there's some defensive lapses there, but, but you knew they had serious talent on the other side. So going into that final, you got that special moment in sevens where you get to stand and sing the anthem, which is rare. Only the finalists get to do that. What was it like hearing the Stars and Stripes and then Oh Canada and knowing that they had a seriously talented team on the other side, uh, Kayla? Um, yeah, I mean, it's always it's always so fun to play against our North American rivals and, you know, to be able to stand up and hear our anthem. I think when their anthem is playing, it's not – anything against them but we're so zoned in on what we're about to do you know either we've sung our anthem and we're zoned in and we're ready to go or we're just getting ready to to like proudly sing with the maple leaf over our heart and just represent each other and our country and all of the hard work that we've put in leading up to those moments because ultimately tours are where we get to showcase all the hard work that we've done all the kickoffs all the all the breakdown work and the tackles and executing our attack and like I said, you know, we don't win games because we're super talented. We win games because we're super talented and connected as a unit. We need all 12 players to be able to contribute to any given moment on the field. And I think that's what we've proven then. And I think what we're proving now, especially. Well, well said. And I think as the fans get to rewatch this one from February 2017, they'll definitely pick that up. Thanks for joining us, ladies. We'll have a few more comments from you after the match. But uh, let's look forward to this one. Thank you to DHL for opening the clubhouse and digging into the vaults and, of course, to Velocity Trade. Uh, enjoy the match. We're going to take you back to Allianz Stadium in Sydney, Australia, February 2017. Enjoy. Enjoy. <laughs> describe Canada's relationship with the USA as sleeping next to an elephant. The rivalry, the legacy and the intensity is steeped in tradition of 
competition over many, many years between these two wonderful nations. And what a pleasure it has been, especially for you, Sudan, as a former international player, watching the growth of the game in these two countries. It certainly is. It's brilliant to see the growth of the game in those two countries. It's brilliant to see the growth of the game across the world. Brilliant to see how full this stadium has been all day, celebrating women's rugby, watching the players at the top of their game. Canada will play right to left. The USA population, 320 million Canada, just 10% of that by comparison. It's David versus Goliath. All the odds stacked in favour. But the games over the years have been fascinating and we expect this one to be no different. It's a loose ball. Emba, who's been outstanding, goes to the ground. Canada. Start from inside their own half. Kish, who's been very dominant, gets her ball away in the tackle. They've got a three-on-one overlap down a narrow blind, but the tackle from Ember is a good one. Moleski. Moleski coming forward and it's tackled inside the half of the USA. Posed, Landry. Now the kick in behind, the chase. Imba. Good vision from Landry. She could see no one was home from the USA and tried the kick through. Didn't quite come off that time when we're seeing USA. The tactics they've used all weekend, kicking to touch, making some territory. They fancy their line out. Not made a huge amount of territory, it's fair to say, with that kick. It's been a very tentative opening 90 seconds. Heverland with the throw for USA. Kish made a play at the ball. It's coming back on the Canadian side. Very intense for possession. Very, very scrappy at the moment, isn't it? Both sides jousting for the superiority, for possession, for the chance to have a go. Line and jumper for the USA. That's Canada off the top. Maleski to the line. Maleski breaks the first tackle. Taken to the ground by the sweeper. They're 18 metres out in front of the post. Kish trying to get the pass away. Good tackle from Kelter. USA competing well at the breakdown. White six, head. White number six, head. The referee's saying he's worried that there's a head injury for Alev Kelter, huge for the USA. She has been such an important player for them this weekend, hasn't she? So crucial, instrumental, pulling all the strings right in the middle of everything. Let's go. Playmaker, try scorer as well, USA. Set play, Kish falls over, so USA get into the back. In behind the Canadian defence. Imba and Tapa, they have twin threats out on the edge. Tapa missed tackle, she's going to go in under the post. We've seen plenty of this this weekend. Naya Tapa, what a finish. She's had an outstanding weekend, a seventh try already this weekend. They've lost a couple of strike runners for Lyon, Javale, Kristen Thomas, who came out for the anthems but can't play because of an injury. But it doesn't show, you can't tell, because Naya Tapper finishing just as brilliantly as all of those players. She's so hard to stop. She is so big and strong, and that, allied with pace, she gets those knees really high and so hard to stop. What a finish. Out of the national program as well. Colorado and San Diego very much the heart and the soul of USA women's rugby. Tap up with that kind of athleticism and that kind of physicality. Always difficult for the opposition. The USA did that without their captain, Alev Kelter, on the pitch.
Jokic. Canada immediately moves the ball to the outside of the USA defence. Emba pulls down Ben. He's had a very good tournament. Kish. Oh, the ball's gone backwards. Kish forced to tidy up inside their own half. Darling, and the Darling gets the ball away on the outside. This is very good running from Landry. The captain called, pulled down from behind. Canada now. 38 metres out. Kish is at first receiver. Shaped a kick. Gave it for Molesky. Kish on the wraparound. But ben out on this left side. Ben. It's away from Emma. She's one on one with a sweeper. Takes her on the outside. It's a great try. Terrific comeback from Canada. The wingers using the outside. And it's a very good wingers try. Great job, Ben. One each for each winger. This time, Ben ran the outside. She takes on Tapper. We see the ball coming at her. A lovely little piece of instant play between the left view and Kish. They can think Williams has perhaps run Ben out of space, but no, Ben's got enough space outside Tapper. Then a despairing dive from Nicole Heaven. And of course, ordinarily, Alev Kelter might be in that position. She's not there. Ben rounded her. Brilliant show of pace from Brittany Ben. Just a little inside out. Take her own Heaven. Terrific finishing. Confidence to back her pace on the outside. Lovely work. Inside, outside swerve that locks it up at seven all. A minute to go to half time. What has been a stunning uh, two days of women's rugby, a real carnival, wonderful atmosphere here in Sydney. Two new teams in the final Canada, two Number wins from six the final appearances. Keep going, in the keep USA, going. this okay, is their now. third appearance in the World Series final, and yet to win one. Emba. Away from the first defender, Emba strong. It's a good carry. Got rid of three defenders, Emba. And Tampa is available on the right-hand side. Could have picked her up, but they can see. Now Landry. Darling. Molesky. Continued by Watch Maroy, who's tackled 32 metres out. They need a quick recycle, Canada. Kish, key player, Kish to the line, gives the ball late for Charity Williams. She goes one on one, takes the sweeper on the inside. Gee, we've seen some outstanding finishing. Three brilliant tries have been scored in this game. And Canada, they nudge ahead 12 7. Yeah, and that try really illustrative of the contrasting styles between these two teams. Canada will always try and stretch you, take you one way, take you the other, and that's what creates the space on the outside because they've pulled the defence all the way across. Naya Tapper shows her inexperience. She's a brilliant finisher, but far less experienced than a lot of players on the pitch and just gets pulled in narrow in defence. And that's what leaves Charity Williams the space. Look, Tapper's got no chance of getting anywhere near Williams. Williams then cuts inside. Brilliant finish from her. Markham, Irish, programme delight. She's enjoying herself here in Sydney. Charity Williams. Entertaining half in the gold medal game. Canada 14 over the USA 7. Great atmosphere, plenty of colour. And two teams that are putting on a show on the field, off the field, around the concourse, in and around the ground. It has been a real carnival, wonderful atmosphere. What a great job the organisers, promoters of this event, as they're just its second year. 
Well, on the basis of what we've seen the last couple of days, Sue, we can be very excited about the future. We certainly can. Robbie Sevens is very much at home in Sydney and Canada and the USA. Women's Sevens teams are very much at home here too. What have they got for us in this second half? USA with a short start. Jennifer Kish is beaten in the air and the ball. Rules have gone forward off Kish first, so USA with the benefit of the advantage have got a three on one overlap down this left side. Imba offloads the ball now. Tapper, Tapper gets away from Williams and Tapper gets his second try. There's been all about the wingers in this final. It really has, isn't it? Sign a good seventh. The ball's getting into the wide open spaces. That said, it wasn't a hugely wide open space that Naya Tappa had to work in here. The offload comes to her. There is not much space here, but the strength is strength is what just about manages to keep her on the pitch. There were millions of millimetres in it there, but the handoff, the strong handoff against Charity Williams. Benefit of the doubt in the rugby union, but if there was, she's entitled to have it. She most certainly received it. Good finish, not a lot of room to move. Again, needed the confidence to back her pace, and she did that. Naya Tapa. Well, that's an indication she's in the elite group of top try scorers over this weekend. Provided us with some real joy and entertainment. They just trailed by two. Short kick the USA. They've won the ball back from the kickoff. Some of your better game every day, Sue. Well spotted by the referee. That was not a drop kick, was it? We're a long way up from here. We couldn't see that, but on the replay, quite clearly comes off Kelter's foot first. Maliski to the line deliberately, a late pass, and then Ben loses the ball. Full. It's a quick advantage. Canada might get the ball back. Landry, this is the captain from Toronto, Scottish, Canada. 14, 12, four and a half on the clock. Thinking about field position and a set play from the line out. Yeah, definitely a high tackle. Definitely in line with what we've seen earlier in the weekend that have been called penalties. Cap is coming off, Charity. Williams is coming off, so two real speedsters of our game. We'll sit down, Megan Lucan is coming on for Canada. Kish. Tournament she's had. Moleski. Landry playing halfback. Kish, hard, determined, nice offload. 10 metres out. Maleski. Good speed of the line of defence. From the USA. Power running now from Farella. Maleski plays halfback. Keish at first receiver. Keish. Another short ball. Maleski going forward. They're just chipping away at the USA defence. It's going to be Farella. Yes. Did she get the ball down? I don't think she did. She got over the line and the tackle came in so hard. No, the referee says she did. It felt to me like she'd been bundled off the back, but she clearly just got it down in time. Bianca Frella keeps coming off the bench and keeps making important scores for Canada. Fiend of the inside ball. Farrell, yes, just gets it down. But to do... Good effort from the USA defender, Carlisle, but just too strong, Farella. Yeah, I think Farella perhaps might want to go for the dive next time. <laughs> dive low and early, and that sort of tackle at the try line will not challenge you. 21 12, just under three minutes to go, which is a long time in sevens. So it's a two score challenge for the USA to get back. 
They'll receive the ball inside their own half. Landry, three chases out on this right-hand side. A bouncer stays in the field to play. Red ball is holding that ball with forward. The USA player. So another set piece opportunity for Canada. Yeah, error from the USA at no. kickoff. You Red really line. need to be catching those kickoffs on the full. That takes out any possible errors from a difficult bounce of the ball. Catch it on the full, and you've got no problem. As it is, Canada get another line out, and we know that they love a line out. Nicholas, Keish, Lucan. Nice little set play. And now a little show and go by Landry to just get in behind the USA defence. Off feet. Keep going, keep going. So the quick tap, Everland recognising the urgency. Time is against him. Emba inside Keish, right arm available. Keish holds on, gets it to the ground. The USA, narrow blind. Cannot. Steps out. Poor decision, poor decision there from the USA. Come bringing the ball down the blind side to Kayla Cannett there in no space whatsoever, and she simply steps off the park, gifting the ball back to Canada when the USA need right now more than anything is possession. Well, and of course tries. Time off break there. Red one, number one. Time is off. Red number one. Yeah. Has been replaced. Outstanding tournament from Ben and the Guelph Red Coats. Nicholas Keish again, another line out win, and quickly they shift the ball to the outside of the USA defense. Good aggressive tackling from the USA. They need the football, they need to score straight away. Now Griffin. Griffin in between two defenders. The sweeper gets it to the ground. So time very much against them. The ball's gone behind Ember. Fantastic effort in defence from Canada against a very good USA team at this tournament. Now Ember. Tapper. Tapper's back out there. One on one on the outside. Gets another try. time very much their enemy now it's only as Tappert snuck out onto the pitch again one-on-one -on -one with a lot of space against Julia Greenshield there was only one result there USA need to get on and take this conversion no they've passed up passed up the conversion Ken running back to the middle so they can get on with the game it's USA quickly shifting the ball to the long side of Naya Tappert a prolific try scorer in uh, this tournament, gets another one down the right-hand side. Some urgency in the USA. They do have to kick the ball back to Canada. And they need something short of a miracle to get out of this, but it's not going to happen, Canada. 21-17, our second different winner in our second tournament. Two new teams in the final. And against an old rival with the tradition of competition that goes back years. It is Canada who will be crowned HSBC 7 Series champion in Sydney in 2017. Absolute pure unbridled joy from the Canadian team. They had such a disappointing Dubai ending up in sixth place. It's so hard when you have to go home thinking over and over again how you didn't perform in a tournament. They'll have been stewing on that for two months. And to come back in this tournament at Sydney, a brilliant place, brilliant place to showcase your seven skills, to come back and get the victory. Absolute joy for this Canadian team. 21-17, many heroes charity. Williams, outstanding performances from her. Delight for the captain. Landry from Toronto, Scottish, and Jennifer Kish. Well, there's a lovely shot. Kish returning from injury. Marvellous tournament she's had.
tough, aggressive, really sets the physical bar for this Canadian team. Number of young players that were in there as well followed suit. Good leadership program, good style of play, wonderful personnel, and when it really mattered today, they got it done. They certainly did, and how fitting that the cameras caught Kish and Landry celebrating together. They're so instrumental in this Canadian victory. Kish doing the hard work up front, making sure Canada have got the ball, and then Landry doing the hard work, playmaking, pulling the strings, making sure Canada make the right decisions at the right times, and they've both been doing that for this Canada team for a very, very long time now. All of Canada and our game around the world celebrate their success. Their third win in a final from seven finals in the USA. They remain 0-3, but we've seen enough from them at this tournament to remind us all that they are a force in the women's game, the USA. And we're going downstairs for the official presentation with Natalie. Which is Lane Landry. What an incredible win for your side today. What pleased you most about that victory? Oh, just that it was a 12-person effort. I mean, the defense over the last day has been, uh, it's been building and, you know, it takes 12 people to win that and that's exactly what we did. Well, that's the thing. It sort of feels like you have been building to this moment. Is that, have you made a conscious effort to do that and hit your straps in the final? Yeah, I mean, we were pretty disappointed at the end of yesterday. Defense is going to win a tournament, so we knew that building off of the Russia quarterfinal, that that's what we wanted to focus on. We know that you guys are an incredible side. You won bronze at the Olympics, but this is a massive statement to the New Zealands and Australians of world rugby, isn't it? We know what we're capable of. Uh, every tournament we look to do that. Sometimes it doesn't go as planned, but we're, we're pretty happy with that, and it's, it's not a surprise to us. And you take on America for the first, or the United States for the first time in a final. What does that say about the growth of rugby? Yeah, the Olympics were a game changer. Pretty proud of North America to have an all-final. Um, it's been building in Canada. I'm sure it's the same in the States, and, and we're really excited about it. How do you celebrate tonight? Uh, uh, together. <laughs> Congratulations on the win. Thank you. Canada. They'll be very popular winners, Canada. Very determined group. They had the right tactics when it mattered. Key players were healthy and the quality of their finishing in the final with not a lot of room to move at times at the touchline was just breathtaking yes Brittany ben has finished well in this tournament hasn't she there she is getting her medal put around her neck right now a lot of firepower there with kish landry in a darling you should watch maroy and kish so good charity williams speed to burn This will be a very positive shot of the arm for the game in Canada and in North America. They would have two teams in the final. Stephen Hughes from HSBC. To present Gislaine Landry, the captain of Canada, with the 2017 HSBC Sydney Sevens Cup. So they are about to be crowned champions for 2017. Canada with a captain. Ghislaine Landry, who herself had a wonderful tournament. And then this will be wonderful for North America. The 2017 Sydney Sevens Champions of Canada. Such a brilliant moment as a player. The celebration, the hard work that you've put into it, the nerves before you run out there, the feeling of anticipation coming into a full stadium, not knowing what to expect from the opposition, that feeling when you know you've won the game, when you get to lift the trophy, all, all the exhaustion, all the pain is absolutely worth it. The gold, silver and bronze winners from the HSBC Sydney Sevens for 2000. 17 what a thrilling two days it has been new zealand stay on top 30. well great scenes there ladies seeing canada on top of the podium with it nice memories for you to look back at this oh yeah <laughs> it's, always fun. Indeed. it's always fun going back in the vault and pulling up old, old game footage definitely makes you uh think about all the things you're doing good now too so <laughs>
Good stuff. So Kayla, uh, didn't always go your way. You guys went down early. Uh, Naya Tapper got three tries. She was a major threat out there in attack. Uh, what was it like and what was said in the huddle when things didn't always go your way in that final? Yeah, USA has a lot of strong players and, and they show that every time they step out onto the field. But I think having that calm, collected head when something goes wrong is is a really good thing to have. And, you know, we have our leaders on our team who kind of, you know, we do a shake it off and let's go. We need to keep focusing. There's still whatever it is, 12, 10, five minutes left in the game. And I think that's always been, you know, our, our focus is to get back on task and take it second by second, whistle to whistle and look to do the small things, right. All the little things, right. To be able to edge our way back up to the top. Well, how crucial that was. They ended up coming back. And uh, Bianca, you came off the bench. You did your job and got what was ultimately the winning try. Um, some question whether you're able to even get it down, but it looks like you did on the video. But it uh, must have been nice to get that moment in a final. Honestly, sevens is not dramatic enough. So I had to, we had to, get, the, we had to get the TMO out for that one. Um, you know, it was really nice watching this final from from Sydney Sevens in 2017. You know, Kayla and I have been at this for a very long time, really since the start of the series. And, um, you know, we've been fortunate enough to fill any role, whether it's a starter or a finisher. And I think that's part of the success of our Rugby Canada centralization program, um, which is, you know, we know how to mentally, physically and mentally fill every role. And so that when we're on the field, we're able to execute our position and our job. Well, it was fantastic to see at the end, all 12 of you on the field celebrating, teammates, friends, sisters, uh, but you got the job done and Canada put on the gold that day. Final word to you, Kayla, uh, that going back to 2017, what was what was that final uh, feeling for you leaving Sydney? I think just just an incredible, uh, an incredible feeling. I mean, again, like you said, we didn't have that good of a final or a finish in Dubai. And we obviously know that we have a lot of talent on our team and just being able to see our team come together and use all of our individual talents, um, strengths, and then, you know, we obviously, everyone has weaknesses. So being able to, to build on those weaknesses and get better as a team, each game, each tournament, I think it just goes to show that, you know, we're such a hard fighting team and we're going to come back no matter what the case is. Um, and we're always looking for that podium finish. So, you know, we finished second of our, in our season this year. That's what I like to say. You might say third, but I really think that we finished second. We were the better better team over the course of this past season. And I think, you know, we've had moments of brilliance in the past. And Sydney Sevens was one of those moments of brilliance. So I think, you know, we just need to keep doing what we've been doing and showing that we're going to show up wherever we are, where, whatever time we're there, we're going to play. Well, well said. And that was one of the great moments for Canadian rugby, the HSBC Women's Sevens Final in, in Sydney. Well done, ladies. Great to share these memories with you. Thanks for sharing with our audience. Of course, thank you to DHL for standing by us. <laughs> Letting you. us come in the vault and to Velocity Trade for being there for us. We really hope you're enjoying these moments from 2017. I'm Gareth Reese. Stay tuned and stay safe. Hey, guys. <laughs>